G'day guys, welcome back to True Footy. I'm Jesse. And I'm Drewzy. And today, we're giving you... Just, just the, the tips. tips. It's COVID. COVID's back. That's the joke. Straight out of lockdown. A crazy motherfucker called Jesse. And Drewzy. Nice. G'day guys, we are filming this uh, not long after lockdown ended here in Perth, which is a relief. We kind of finessed it, so we didn't actually have to skip any episodes and do it via mm. Skype like we did last time, like plebs. Uh, but today... We're going to take you through, uh, obviously, our round 17 predictions and talk a little bit about the disgusting round 16 that was for both of our clubs. But if you want to see even more analysis and more in-depth analysis, go to Drewsy's channel. Oh. The Drew Footy Show should be out right now. Uh, link in the description to find that. We'll be talking about the previous round, and today we're going to focus more on the upcoming round 17 fixtures. In addition to being a rough week to watch for both of our clubs, Drewsy, we also didn't do too crash hot in footy tipping, which is a huge surprise. Mind you, you're actually still in the top 79, but you have plummeted a bit. You scored five. You beat me this round. So. I, yeah, I, I think I was up at like, what was, uh, my highest was like seventh at one point in the season. Wow. And now I've chucked a nine on the back of that. Wow. So, and your dad is only bloody, what, one tip behind me now in 97th. You're plummeting down further <laughs> and further at 407. Tieth, uh, 81 correct tips, so mm. I'm still 11 tips ahead of you. But yeah, this round was very tricky to tip with Gold Coast winning, uh, GWS beating Melbourne, so I think everyone got that wrong. I'm, I'm very happy I changed my tip. I said I'd tip Collingwood last week, and I ended up changing my tip to mm. St Kilda. And I said on the show that I was going to tip Sydney, and I changed it to West Coast. Oh, that's right, you did too, did you? So what, what, what separated us this round? Uh, <laughs> how many did you get? I got four. Brisbane, uh, Port. You should have got all them. What the fuck? Who'd you get wrong? Who did I get wrong? <laughs> oh, you tipped Collingwood. What the hell? How did I tip <laughs> Collingwood? I blatantly tipped St. Kilda on the last video. Fuck off. <laughs> I never even thought Collingwood were going to win. I'm depressed. <laughs> <laughs> That's rough. Fuck me. Rough like the family dog. Anyway, we'll shout out the uh, the winners uh, across the league of this round as well. So, once again, the best score was 7 out of 9, which is fairly modest, but great tipping by you, Leap and Roars, uh, to get 7 correct and the margin of just 1. The overall leader is, for the first time, Ignatius Sim, although I don't know if that was the previous winner who changed his name. But either way, uh, congrats. You're on 99 and a margin of 424. So, absolutely killing it. And once again, our fantasy leader is Shuckus slash James English with an average of 29. Well done, fellas and lasses. As always, guys, we're about to get into the video, but do go check out the sponsors of the True Footy YouTube channel, manscaped.com, where you can get 20% off and free shipping, which is an elite offer on some amazing ball grooming and general chest shaving products. I use them myself, um, as I can show you later, Jersey, but uh, looking very El Clino down there. It's a great product. Uh, you get a 90 minute battery runtime as well, so you can watch a whole game of the Euros, Jersey, just shaving your nuts, which uh, you probably need, to be honest. Yeah, I definitely do. It's mm. been a while. They've I've got other products as well, like a little ball deodorant and moisturizer. They've got a cologne out, which is sick. Um, nice. Ours has just arrived and it's fantastic. I'm a, I'm a big fan of cologne these days. So uh, go check it out. You get 20% off and free shipping. Uh, let's get into the video. Big fan of cologne these days. <laughs> <laughs> I am, yeah. All right, let's get into the round. Uh, of course, we do have to highlight that as we're recording this, we don't have all the information about where these games are going to be played. Some of them uh, have a question mark over them, so we'll just do our best at the moment. Um, I'm sure by the time this comes out, we'll look stupid, but uh, yeah. that was going to be the case. Either way, Port Adelaide versus Melbourne, uh, that one is confirmed for Thursday night. Uh, no reason to think it won't be at Adelaide Oval, yeah. um, but this is a really big clash, probably the biggest clash of the round. Last week, we saw uh, Port Adelaide touch up Hawthorne mm. in Marvel, uh, at Marvel, and you'd expect that that game pretty much went uh, towards... <laughs> the way that it was expected to go. Thank you for rescuing that. Uh, Wines, as we talked about, one of the Brownlow favourites. Uh, 43 possessions, 13 clearances. It was an absolute monst monster. <laughs> Weird. Butters might be back in for this clash. On the other hand, uh, the Ds were shocked by GWS, despite the efforts of guys like Salem and Petrarca. Just couldn't buy a goal. I think they kicked seven goals, 13, mm. and left out Brown or Wiedemann, which was weird. Uh, in addition to Butters back in, uh, most likely, Dersmo is a chance as well. So mm -hmm. a couple of handy ins for Port Adelaide at home. How do you think this game's going to go? This is the most tricky game to tip. They get they get trickier and trickier as yeah. the season goes on because if you look at Port Adelaide's home form against top eight sides this season, it's been El Stanco, mm. as they say in Spain. They've only beaten Sydney at home uh, as a top eight side, mm. I believe. They've been beaten by Geelong. They've been beaten by the Bulldogs. Two sides that have lost to Melbourne. But Melbourne just can't find a goal at the moment. They're, they're really struggling to put the score on the board. Still very uh, sound, solid defensively. But... I don't know which way this is going to go. Port are probably in better form coming off two wins as opposed to uh, Melbourne, who have lost three of their last six. Very hard game to tip, Jesse. 
I feel like a few weeks ago, I would have definitely tipped Melbourne, but having lost at home to GWS, um, it's they're looking a bit shaky, and I don't know if this will be the game they come back. Lost Obviously, to Adelaide there too. Yeah, that's true. Worse yeah. than Port Adelaide. I'm going to um, say to be further assessed on this one. I'll, for now, I'll say... No tips today. Yeah, no tips today. Sorry, come back next week. I'll talk to Caden, see what he has to say, but I'll... I'll Chuck down Port Adelaide for now. I'll say they'll win by... Oh, no. I don't think... I don't know which way. So I, close to getting to my turn. I can't tip this game. You go. Seriously? I can't. I genuinely right. can't split it. Fuck's sake. I'm going to tip Port Adelaide uh, by a few goals. Basically, just because of uh, the Demons are in a slump. Obviously, it's gonna they're going to come out of it at a random time. But um, could be this week. It could be this week. But I'll, I'll back Port in to, to win a game against the top eight team. So... Yeah, Content. I'm like 52-48 leaning towards Port Adelaide, so I'll just say Port Adelaide for the video, but I don't know a margin, because right. it's in the future, I haven't seen it yet, how can I know a margin? <sighs> Oh well, yeah, what, why have we been doing this video? The second game of the round is the Brisbane Lions versus St Kilda. This game is fixtured for the Gabba, but of course we're still uncertain of uh, whether you know teams will be playing back in Victoria. Uh, sorry, back in Queensland. Obviously, mm. Gold Coast played in Victoria. Uh, the Lions were in Adelaide this week, so I suggest this game could be in Adelaide. But uh, to be honest, for me, it doesn't really. Um... I think they left the state. So okay, there you go. So we'll, we'll see what happens there. But for me, I think it's, it's still obvious who's going to win. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, Brisbane last week uh, had a really commanding win over the Crows, who put up a good fight, but then. Brisbane just showed their class in the last term. We talked about Zach Bailey on the Drew Footy Show. Three goals, 26 possessions. Um, absolutely killing it. You're a big fan of that. Young really. gun. Very, very good. Yeah. Um, Neil was injured. He was laid out for Adelaide. So, uh, my understanding is he's certainly not going to be back for this game. Not sure how long he's out for. Uh, we'll talk about St. Kilda. They had a unconvincing win against Collingwood. The sort of game where you, both teams walk away a little bit disappointed. Yeah. Because of uh, the way that sort of petered out for the Saints. But... In positive news, Jack Steele had uh, 36 disposals, 15 tackles. And I think uh, I saw today he's had 16 games where he had 20 possessions and 10 tackles. So it's an ultra-consistent gun player. Um, in terms of team news, I think Billings might be in for the Saints, but he's mm -hmm. a handy player. But uh, overall, like, how do you see this game going? St. Kilda looks good in parts against Collingwood. I talked about it on the Drew Footy Show, but yeah, the Rockmen are both back in, Ryder and Marshall. So they're, they're getting first use to their mids, mm. as Jesse it's says. It's a good midfield too. Yeah, very good midfield. And if they can just... Like solidify their spine and just get the ball into Membry and King just from centre clearances. They're, they're every chance to, to come back into form, but not against the Brisbane Lions. I got a comment a couple of weeks ago saying after I tipped uh, Richmond to win by 46 against St Kilda, it was like lol Richmond by 46. So yeah. I, I'm scared to tip a, a big margin against St Kilda. I'm not scared, but um, anyway, um, I'm going to tip Brisbane to win this one. They're the most quality in form side in the competition right now at this point in the season. They'll win this game comfortably. I'll go 23 points. I think uh, St Kilda have gained a little bit of respect uh, from everyone. Not a whole somewhat, heap, somewhat, yeah. but they've regained some respect. Mm -hmm. And but like you said, Brisbane don't often sort of shit the bed against teams mm. they shouldn't win. So no. yeah, I think wherever this game's played, Brisbane should win quite comfortably. I'll say thirty-five points. At home or far away, that's not the Brisbane song. No. It's <laughs> At home or far away, yeah, Carlton versus Geelong. That kind of works because the next <laughs> game is Carlton versus Geelong. The Blues coming off a away win against Fremantle. Not really, obviously. Away okay, at the uh, MCG. At the MCG. So yeah, that's something to take into account. But uh, it was a strange game where they obviously got out to a big lead. Um, Fremantle reined it back in, but ultimately Fremantle couldn't make the most of their better su or more supply, um, mm. and obviously shanked it in front of goal. So, but nonetheless, you have to give. Respect to Carlton for at least uh, notching a win and yeah. uh, they've been a team that's heavily criticised but we've seen some slightly improved performances you had guys like Paddy Dow and Matt Kennedy it's good to see them I guess sort of uh, taking some of the load mm. off uh, Patrick Cripps in a non-sexual way Jack Silvani was really good for Carlton as well that's probably true. one of their best five on the night yep and we're almost sick of talking about Sam Walsh uh, mm. fantastic uh, winning goal and probably the best on ground as well as like you said on the Drew Footy Show they are coming up against the Cats however though and um, obviously one of the powerhouses of the competition mm -hmm. Dangerfield put out a, a massive performance with one goal and 37 touches as they uh, clapped Essendon. Tom Stewart's virtually guaranteed All-Australian another really good performance, although it did come at the cost of Jeremy Cameron, who's out for yeah, several weeks, maybe a month, however. That being said, with their forward power, I don't think it's a huge factor, especially not in this game, and I also don't know about the availability of Cripps going into this yeah, game, but uh, how do you see this game going at the MCG? It was pretty much the same story going into this fixture last season, and Carlton won it. So... Carlton could have like a bit of a, a mental ticker going into this one, thinking and having the belief that they can win this game. But I mean, you can't tip Carlton to beat Geelong. That's just criminal. Yeah, Dangerfield's getting into some really good form, which is very good to see. I'm going to tip Geelong to win this one, Jesse. I'll tip Geelong to win. I don't know. They're very hot and cold, so they could probably just show up and play pretty average but win this game by like 15 points. But they could also show up and absolutely dominate with Jeremy Cameron out. 
probably going to be less uh, less chance of them absolutely pumping. I'm really stumbling on my words today. Geelong are going to win this one by 28 points. Fair enough. I think Carlton have showed some improved form, but not enough to justify tipping them against uh, yeah. Geelong. It would be a massive upset, I think. You, you're right. They're pointing out that they did beat them at GMHBA last year. And from memory, Carlton do sort of match up well on the yeah. Cats for whatever reason. And I think that's been the case for like a decade for whatever reason. But either way... I, can't possibly tip yeah. Carlton. So I'll say Geelong by 31. Next up at Marvel Stadium, we have uh, a pretty interesting clash. I would say Essendon versus the Crows. Um, Essendon coming off a strange performance against the Cats where they kicked the first four and then sort of didn't really mm. give up too much of a whelp after that, although it is against tough opposition. Parrish, again, the absolute machine. 43 possessions and a goal. Uh, yeah, lot Magical. for all Australian, you'd say, almost at this point. And a Brownlow a chance, that's for sure. Um, but also Stringer has been a massive... Uh, boost for them. Uh, the form he's turned on in the last month or two has been fantastic. Three goals and 25 possessions. The Crows, on the other hand, they put up a performance against the Lions, which was good, but the scoreline kind of blew out at the end. It was probably a case of you know the scoreboard flattering Brisbane a little bit, although they are a quality side. Either way, I'm just saying that the Crows you know played with a decent spirit as they have all year. Tex Walker out now. Most likely, he was you know yeah, taken off with a neck, neck injury. So I don't know how long that will be. Hopefully not too long, but I'd be Pretty surprised if he gets up for this game. Um, Seedsman's actually been another real... Uh, I yeah. think he might be having his career best season. He had 2-21 and 21 as well. For Essendon, I believe Shield might be coming back for this game as well. I forgot is, he even existed. Yeah, well, Essendon improved after they got all those injuries to yeah. Caldwell, Draper and Shield. But uh, regardless, how do you see this game going? Uh, I think Essendon will win this one. They've been in really good form. They, they compete every week. They're, mm. they're in with a sniff. Uh, I thought they could have made a real good contest of that game against Geelong, but the, the class just... Showed through in Geelong, the grand finalists uh, ended up winning that game. Adelaide, yeah, they played with a good intensity, some good passion, some heart, some vigour. But no, Essendon have been in really good form. They've probably been one of my favourite teams to watch this season. Really exciting side. I'm going to tip them to win this game at home against Adelaide. I'll go by 20 points. Hmm. It's been a tale of Essendon's previous seasons to be really good in flashes and really terrible in other flashes. Mm. And I don't think we've seen a really terrible Essendon side this year. Maybe, obviously, they've had bad games, but... That uh, one against Hawthorne, first game of the season, was probably their worst. But lost by that, point. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I think... In previous years, I'd be more scared of Essendon dropping this, but I weirdly trust them now, so mm -hmm. I'm going to tip them to win by 17 points. Tex Walker back in, that would actually give Adelaide a chance. I think he's yeah. their biggest chance of an upset here, but if, if he's not in, Essendon will win this by yeah, three goals. Next up, we have the Expansion Cup. Uh, coming off a week where both of these sides are enjoying uh, some very good wins, GWS are uh, hosting Gold Coast at an undisclosed location at this point. Cause What's this... an Expansion Cup? <laughs> <laughs> it does sound like it would be something biological. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like something like a gynecologist would use. Yeah, that's <laughs> what I was thinking. And that could well be the tale of this game. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, content. At this stage, uh, obviously this game is scheduled for Sydney, but with their COVID situation, I think we can rule out yeah. a game there, to be honest. So this game might be in Victoria, or you know, GWS could host it somewhere at the MCG. Heard it be. might be at Ballarat, maybe. Oh, okay, that's could be anywhere. Yeah, we haven't seen a game at Ballarat rescheduled yet, which is uh, strange. But yeah, um, that could draw a huge crowd. Um, <laughs> JWS and Gold goes in Ballarat. <laughs> now, in all seriousness, the Giants are coming off uh, probably the peak of their season. Uh, they've had some good wins this year, but that was uh, beating the, the Demons um, on mm -hmm. their home deck was a huge win. Tom Green, uh, rising star, almost favourite. I don't know. Mm. We'll, we'll talk about that uh, later in the week. We've got a video coming out. But um, he's been super consistent. Whitfield and Kelly were all classes. They so often are. Uh, for Gold Coast, we talked about on the Drew Footy Show, Jack Lacocious, um, drafted as a key forward, now turned into a running defender, and he's absolutely killing it. Um, really good sort of offensive route out the mm -hmm. back half. Miller also had 36. You talked about him on that show. In terms of ins, though, Cornelio is a chance to play, and I think Lockie Weller could be due back in, and I think he's a good little player for Gold yeah. Coast. But how do you see this game going? I think, actually, I did say on the Drew Footy Show that Cornelio will be back in this week, but I actually think he's a week off. I think he played his first game in the VFL, so he's going to get right. more match fitness. He could come in, but he'll probably be rushed if he does yeah. come back in. Fair As enough. you said, both these sides coming off the, probably the biggest game of their season, mm. beating Richmond, the Suns, and then, yeah, GWS beating the top of the table, Melbourne Demons. So, yeah, both teams are going to come into this with a lot of confidence. GWS have been an absolute yo-yo side this year, mm. Jesse. Up and down, dropping really disappointing games against North Melbourne and Hawthorne, but then beating t sides like Melbourne and West Coast. So you just don't know what GWS side is going to show up. Um, but they played really well last week, and I think they're a much better side than Gold Coast. GWS, I could see sneaking into the eight. They'll need to win this game to, to stake their claim in the eight, and I'll tip them to win this game, Jesse. I'll tip them to win my 20... 
I'll go again. 34 points. <laughs> yeah, I think GWS are obviously coming out of a slump where people, you know, heat the criticism on and to beat the Demons, that's got the pressure off their back and I'd be very surprised if they drop back down. It would mm. be an almighty loss um, and we've seen a lot of those from top eight contenders yeah. lately, but uh, I, I'd say GWS will win this comfortably. Four goals. The next game of the round uh, is Fremantle versus Hawthorne. I say Fremantle versus Hawthorne, not Hawthorne versus Fremantle because it appears this game could be moved to Perth mm. um, because even though these two, two, two sides have played each other in Perth this year, but Hawthorne gained a home game against GWS. You guys lost one against Carlton. So uh, I think this is in Perth, um, but we'll bear in mind that that could change by the yeah. time this video comes out. Fremantle, a disappointing loss against Carlton, a game where if you're pushing for the top eight, this is a really bad four points to lose. It wasn't a terrible performance, but it was obviously just not uh, not potent in the way that they sort of generated a lot of opportunities. Mm. Started slow um, and just couldn't put it on the scoreboard. Brayshaw, really good. Yeah. Uh, I do like to talk about the positives. He had two goals and 28 touches and yeah, you must be so happy to have someone like Brayshaw. Yeah, he's literally like what I want every Frio player to be. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, he epitomises what it is. Like, the, the young talent at Frio plays with so much heart and integrity and vigour. Mm. Um, did you see that goal where he bursted out of the pack and mm. snapped it? I did see Unreal. That. Yeah. I had the biggest voice break on stream when, <laughs> when he kicked that yeah, I love him. He's a star. Sean Darcy also good. Uh, one forty goal. hitouts, forty hit dominated, out. and I think twenty touches is his best uh, possession count, if I'm not mistaken, as well. So he's really coming on le leaps and bounds. Hawthorne uh, were well held against Port Adelaide. They had thirteen inside fifties in the first half. Admittedly, against a, you know a really good side in Port Adelaide, but um, a disappointing performance in the sort of scope of how they've been playing better. Yeah. This was a bit of a reality check, unfortunately. What uh, what fears do you have over Hawthorne? Do you think you guys will get the chocolates? Uh, I think we will win. The fear that I have is that they just nab upsets, yeah. like, randomly. But I think Freo are a good enough side to not just be beaten by sides like this anymore. Like, earlier on in the season, uh, we lost to Essendon, a game we should have won. Uh, in hindsight, Essendon are a good side, so not too... Hard to like look back on that, but yeah, I don't think we just drop games like this anymore. Like we'll, we'll at least compete, which is good. Um, we, we've improved from the start of the season. We beat Hawthorne last time. There's no reason that we can't do it again. Um, I'll tip Freo to win this one by 35. I agree. I don't think Hawthorne quite have the quality to knock you guys off. That being said, they did beat GWS. Um, and Sydney. At home. Yeah, so oh, that's true. Yeah, Sydney just didn't show up in that game. Um, yeah, I don't think Hawthorne have proven themselves really capable. This would be a big win if they pulled it off. So I'll, I'll tip... Uh, well, if it's in, in Perth, I'll tip Fremantle by four or five goals. I don't think it'll be in Victoria. Um, it could be in Tasmania if they let anyone in. Yeah, so we'll see what happens there. Tasmania does open it a bit, so I'll, yeah. I'll reserve... Maybe I might change my tip, but I, I, I still would lean towards Fremantle. Yeah. So, yeah. Next up, we have Richmond versus Collingwood. At the start of the year, we would have pegged this as uh, not maybe a grand final preview, but obviously a big clash between <laughs> two sides that, in my opinion, should have been going for the finals. Um, Collingwood have really disappointed me this year, but Richmond were obviously deplorable. Two weeks in a row against Gold Coast, only two players had 20 possessions, um, which is, <laughs> yeah, quite an indictment on, uh, on their performance. They had 40 less possessions, 10 less scoring shots to lose by 10 points as well, so it could have easily been worse. And the Pies, um, like we talked about on the Drew Footy Show, similar performance to their loss against Geelong earlier in the year where they didn't show up for two and a half quarters, registered like one goal in the, in the first half and then came back and nearly won the game mm -hmm. and just left it too late. So kind of promising in some respects, but also concerning in others. In terms of injuries, Dacos uh, had a finger injury. Don't know if he'll miss. Coleman Jones did a calf and usually, you know, you, you rest players who do a calf yeah. are down to be back straight in. So a no. bit of a structural uh, loss there for the Tigers. But considering their form, uh, what chance do they have of losing this? Considering their form, they have a massive chance of losing this. <laughs> yeah. But come on, man. Like, Collingwood, they've got a new coach. They just look a bit all over the place. They're playing with no real confidence. Integrity. Integrity. It looks like they have the handbrake on still, Collingwood. Mm. That's the best way to describe that game yesterday against mm. St. Kilda. And when they dropped it in the fourth quarter, they looked pretty good. Um, but Richmond, you can't ever write Richmond off and... It's just a matter of time before that switch is flicked. If it's not, their dynasty could be over. So it's massive times at the moment for Richmond. Need a massive response here. They won this game earlier in the season. Got to do it again. Need more players to lift because Dusty can't carry the side. Basha Hooley's out as well. Richmond need a win to keep in the top eight race because they could slip out of it. So I'll tip Richmond to win this one. I'll tip him to win by 20 points. I'm going to agree with you. I think Richmond should win this. But mm. uh, obviously we said that the last three weeks, I think, yes. except Richmond. Richmond can't possibly 
not lift after mm. that, but after the last couple of weeks. So I'll tip them by a few goals. Next up is another contender for one of the matches of the round, considering these two sides form over the last uh, mm -hmm. couple of weeks. But uh, the Bulldogs are hosting Sydney at Marvel Stadium. Um, the Bulldogs just sewed up top spot with uh, a win over North Melbourne, where North kind of challenged them. I'm sure the Dogs kind of have another couple of gears to go to. Yeah, um, but sure. they kind of did enough to win. Uh, unfortunately, it came at the cost of Norton, who's concussed and out for this game confirmed. Um, but on the plus side, they had Waitman bob up for a breakout yeah. game, had four goals. Um, so yeah, they're, they're looking red hot. There's not too much we need to say about the dogs to make a case for them winning this game. The Swans pulled out their best performance for the year, I would say. Certainly the most dominant. Uh, Buddy kicked three, could have had six, <laughs> to yeah. be honest. Uh, Mills had 35, and the Swans had 436 possessions, really dominated the Eagles on the outside. Um, they dominated every category, but that was the most stark um, yeah. dominant uh, part of the game. In fact, the uncontested possessions were 288 to 210, which just shows they had so much more run. In terms of team news, I think Stefan Martin's a chance to come okay. in, but uh, I don't know how much that will uh, sort of change our predictions. Um, what chance have Sydney have of an upset here? This could be a thriller. Mm. Like, yeah, Sydney looked really good. It, I said on the Drew Footy Show, it looks like a training drill for Sydney against West Coast. Um, that outside uncontested pos possession footy will probably be cut off this week against the Bulldogs because their midfield's so stacked and with True. guys like Bailey Smith on the outside. And yeah, at Marvel, the Bulldogs are very solid. But Sydney looked really, really good. I, I sort of wrote them off a couple of weeks ago. It looked like all of their young guns were sort of fizzling out of form and, uh, yeah, just gassing at the midpoint in the season. But guys like Errol Golden and uh, Amati? Yep. Marty, Smarty, Marty. Um, yeah, they looked really good. So the the young guns aren't going anywhere for Sydney. This will be a massive game, and I'm pretty uh, tied between who I'm going to tip here. I'll, I'll tip uh, the Bulldogs though. Safe tip at home, best side in the comp, just about. They'll win this one by I'll go 18 points. Mm. I, uh, I agree with all that. I think this would be my upset of the round if we mm. decide to fucking do that this week. <laughs> <laughs> Sydney is definitely capable on current form to knock off the dogs, 100%. Mm. In fact, I've got an upset feeling, but I will... I've got an upset feeling. <laughs> I will tip uh, the dogs. Safe tip. Yeah. yeah, so we'll get that one wrong. Saving the best for last, we've got West Coast hosting North Melbourne at Opta Stadium on what is probably going to be a drizzly Monday night. Oh. <laughs> so, yeah, this is going to be an absolute blockbuster. Um, did you see the Eagles are actually in trouble with the RSPCA? Why is that? Uh, apparently, instead of sending the players, they dressed up 22 pigs in uh, blue and gold <laughs> jumpers and got them to run around GMHBA. Still called, scored three goals, which is incredible. <laughs> uh, for the Eagles, there's... Uh, I always try and find positives after a game. Um, rats! Can't find what, any. What do we got? No, that was the, one of the worst performances I've seen the Eagles Brad Shepard looked all right. I, I had Yo as the positive. He had 26 disposals. No one's talking about him, but he actually he plays with grunt and heart. Now yeah. probably lack. Mind you, I, I, in, as we said on the Drew Footy Show, contested ball was the one area we didn't get slaughtered mm. in, um, and that's normally our weakness. It yeah, was, Dom Sheet had like 37 touches or something, that somehow. Was, that was the single worst 37 disposals. <laughs> it was close to worst on ground for me. I love Dom Sheet. No, I don't hate him. I'm not even I'm not even trying to just like uh, tra talk trash. Worst 37 disposals performance. It, it was. Look, it was a pathetic performance from the Eagles. That's two pathetic performances in a row and I, I think there's a count of maybe five really pathetic performances mm. this year and this absolutely takes the cake so uh, no reason for it to happen in terms of personnel because this is the strongest side we've put out we, we lacked Ryan and Gaff but you know still very healthy team in in theory North Melbourne uh, put a pretty good performance up against the Dogs side that was expected to clap them in fact beat them by uh, 128 earlier in the year so um, a good return fixture for them in the sense that they competed um, Zerha was great he kicked four he's yeah. a real danger player for them uh, real positive and Zebel uh, had 28, Hall had 31. So the, the sort of regular com uh, contributors were there again for North Melbourne. They have an improved month of football. Mm -hmm. Jed Anderson's maybe in, I think. Um, I, I am shocked to say this, but can they beat the Eagles in Perth? They played better than West Coast did last yeah, week. They have, yeah, they would beat us. They would have beaten us last week if that was at GMHBA. Not that the ground yeah. mattered, but like that, they would have beaten us. Yeah, play the factor. Um, yeah, North Melbourne are going to be licking their lips at a West Coast side who are licking their wounds. I'll say, hey, let, let me come and lick as well. Yeah, no, very impressed with how North Melbourne played against the Bulldogs, considering they got pumped by 140 earlier on in the season. Uh, but West Coast at home, not many sides beat them except for Essendon. <laughs> and the Bulldogs. And the Bulldogs who absolutely pumped you. But yeah, I mean, this is a different kettle of fish, mate. A much yeah. easier one. It's probably like a goldfish as a, as opposed to like a, I don't know, like a wicked thin tuna or something like that. Mm. Hope for your sake that they come back into form at some point soon. But the top eight, it's getting uh, very tight mm. at, the, at the bottom end. And West Coast really can't be dropping these games. They won't. They won't lose this game. Yeah. They'll win this one by 34. I mean, I think I said last week we rarely put in a bad performance and then don't show up the next week mm. and then we got absolutely slaughtered. Yeah. Um, but I can't possibly tip North. 
I just yeah yeah I could, <laughs> like, they could win obviously, but I I would be really really sad if they did. <laughs> <laughs> that would be that'd make my year. Oh hey. uh, yeah right yeah I like how like all the highlights of Fremantle season this year is the Eagles losses. Yes, <laughs> I was gonna say I was really sad Sunday morning waking up after a loss, but I woke up and saw Eagles get pumped, and it honestly made me forget about the loss. Like mm. all the negative emotion was outweighed by Eagles just getting absolutely pumped. Yeah, look, I'll lock my tip in. Uh, West Coast should win this by seventeen points. Uh, I don't think it will... You don't want to tip them to win by 17. Why? Surely more. Do you reckon? No, yeah. I don't reckon. I reckon this would be a decent game. Not in, <laughs> not in quality, just in closeness. <laughs> I, I think we'll win. We, we're seventh and we have plenty to play for. It's not like we're out of the finals race now and yeah. that's where things could really turn to shit. This club has a lot to play for. Um, potentially players playing for their careers. Suddenly there's co- uh, pressure on the coach. I, I think we'll see some sort of response. But it's not hard to do better than the last two years. <laughs> All right, that's it, guys. That is our tips wrapped up by our sponsors, Jurex. Um, <laughs> I think I made that joke last yeah. week. But anyway, uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. And let us know in the comments what you think of uh, our tips. Upset of the week, North Melbourne. Really? Yeah, <laughs> no, that's fair. I don't know why I'm surprised. <laughs> so let us know your tips. Let us know your upset of the round. Uh, and do go check out Drew's channel for the Drew Footy Show and both of our channels just for heaps of footy content coming soon. So thanks, guys, and we'll see you in the next video. Ah!